Today on White Collar Garage, we got a 2002 Chevy Astro van with a V6. It's a 4.3 liter V6, and GM ran these for many, many years. So we're going to change the water pump on this thing and go through the steps on how to do it. So let's get started. Usually the first thing you do is drain the coolant with a pepcock. I don't do that step because when you take the bolts out of the water pump, it's going to leak fluid out of there anyways. So to make it quicker and then not messing with the pepcock, when you do that, they can break. They can be a real pain in the rear to get to. So I just sit there and I'll take the bolts out and then pop the water pump off and just let it all splash out real quick. So the next step is, is we got to get this air cleaner assembly off and get down there and take the shroud off. So we're going to go through those steps right now. So you got a couple tab, tabs here, you pull those tabs up, there's a couple 8 millimeters and there's a connector for the mass airflow sensor and the intake air temperature sensor. You take those off, pull this back, and then this housing that the air filter's in just pops up. Just pull it right up. It's little rubber grommets here that leaves behind, this one's kind of torn, and you just put it back up in the housing of the air filter. There's an 8 millimeter clamp that holds on the air filter housing. Give it a little twist, pull, comes right out. On this fan shroud you have six bolts. You have one on this side up underneath here, then you have one on this side up underneath here, and then you've got one down in here, there are two down in here, you have two more down in here, there's you can see just the one right there and then there's another one in this corner over here. We're going to take those out and then pull the shroud off. So I missed one bolt here in the middle. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. So there's seven 10 millimeter bolts. It can get a little tricky to get out. So you're going to make sure you keep pulling these up. And then once you get it out so far, you got to get it around the master cylinder side first and then pop it out and now we can get down to the fan. Now we got to get the clutch fan off of the water pump. So you need to get one of these tools like this. They loan them at AutoZone and O'Reilly's. I think Napa does. And this is another tool that goes down and holds on to the four bolts. This has four bolts that bolts into the water pump that holds the water pump pulley on. So you can get back in there and, and hold the four bolts with that. I usually don't use this tool. I usually just use this one and a hammer and I'll demonstrate that right now to pop the uh, fan clutch off. There's the fan clutch bolt sticking out. So we're going to stick the tool right down onto it. We're going to hold it right there and then we're going to hit this with a hammer to break it loose. So give myself a hammer. This is righty tighty lefty loosey. So we're just going to stick it on here and we're going to give it a couple of smacks. So that way's not going to work. So we are going to have to use this tool right here. That tool is a little funky and you got to use a half inch ratchet for it. And uh, you're going to just have to play around with it till you get it to hook up onto the bolts and get it so the wrench can go in there. And then you pry on it. Oh, this one's really tight. There, now we busted it loose. Once it's loose, it pretty much comes off by hand. If it doesn't want to come off by hand by spinning it counterclockwise, you might have to put the wrench on it a couple of times. Now you notice I left the belt on. Leaving the belt on makes it easier for you to break the clutch fan bolt loose. So um, now we take the 10 millimeter bolts off of the water pump pulley. Now we're going to take a ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket and we're going to break these loose. With once we got them loose, now we can take the belt off. So once we got the 10 millimeter bolts loose for the water pump pulley, we take this belt off. You just use your 3 8 ratchet. There's a square hole in it and we're going to move it in the counterclockwise direction, the loosened direction, and then that pops the belt off. Make sure you notice how this belt is run so you put it back on the same way. Now that we got the pulley off, there's a 
hose here, here, and down here. I take this pulley off right here to make it easier to get this hose back here in this clamp. Now this is where the mess starts. So I'm going to take this lower radiator hose off the water pump and I'm going to let that start to leak the fluid out and then I'm going to take these top two up here and that's where it's going to leak out the fluid really fast. Sometimes those spring clamps can be a real bear so you want to try to spin the clamp around if it'll spin sometimes they won't but if you can get them to spin around to where you can get on them then that's makes it easier this one's being very difficult now you want to make sure that you don't leave this clamp out here like like that because it can interfere with the belt and it might shred it. So you want to make sure that you do put it back in the top position. This is a pick tool. You can use one of these. You got to be very careful with these when you put them down in here that you don't come through and poke through the radiator hose and cause an issue. Or you can use a screwdriver, a flat tip screwdriver, and slowly work it around to get it to come loose. And you can see how it's starting to leak cooling out. And we're doing it the fast way. But it's also the messy way. So once I've got that clamp, that hose freed up like I do, I'll work the hose back and forth and just pull it off. Let that leak down and hopefully you got a pan underneath there that's going to clean up all that or catch all that coolant. There's four 916 bolts holding this water pump on. There's two on the passenger side and two on the driver's side. And we're going to use about a six inch extension and in the ratchet and we're going to pop those four bolts off. These water pumps can be on fairly tight so you got to grab them and sometimes lift them up and down and they really don't want to come off so I grab a hammer knowing that I got the four bolts all the way out and I'll give it a light tap pop it right off and you can see right there all that cooling around this weep hole that's where the water pump was leaking I take a razor blade and scrape the surfaces clean it takes a little while and you want to watch out that you don't take the razor blade and shove it behind the timing cover because then it'll leak oil. But it takes a little while and you just got to work it at the right angles to get it to come off and get, get it clean and you got to get it down to the bare metal. So after scraping for about 25 minutes you can get this down and get it pretty clean I'm trying to get a good light on it but you gotta make sure that you get all the gasket off there and it likes to stick around the bolt holes okay so on these water pumps on the new one you take these gaskets and you gotta get them to stick to the water pump now people use silicone all the time and silicone causes these gaskets to push out on the sides and cause can cause a leak so what I do is I take some spray adhesive and I spray adhesive the one side of it and then I glue it down and that's what we're gonna do right now make sure to try to line the holes up as best you can try not to touch the face side of the spray adhesive voila those are glued on now now these bolt holes passages go into the coolant passages so we have to take these bolts and we've got to put liquid teflon or a little bit of teflon tape on them also these are wet right now so we got to dry them up a little bit and clean them up if they've got a lot of corrosion on them and stuff you want to hit them with a wire brush 
and try to get off all of, as much as that corrosion as possible and clean up the threads so we can put good Teflon tape on there or liquid Teflon to get a seal for these threads. So what I like to do is put the water pump bolts in the water pump and hold it down and then I'll grab this right here and I'll slide it up in there if I get it in the right position here and then we'll start the one bolt and I usually stop start the two top bolts first to make sure I'm gonna have to switch hands here but we got it in correctly when you tighten these up you want to tighten up one side at a time driver side top tighten up the lower one and then the upper one there you go water pumps on you can see I've got this bypass hose that comes out of the water pump and down into the intake manifold I have it connected I got the lower hose connected but I've left this one open this is the same height as the thermostat housing so when I fill the coolant up it'll come out of here and then I'll put the hose on there and then I know when I go to start this thing up I've got coolant behind the thermostat housing and then it will open up and it's a quick way to burp these systems and what burping means is if you get an air pocket in there if I was to put this hose on there and fill up the system it would take longer for the thermostat to open up and for me to get the proper coolant level to finish this job off you can see I filled it up just so there's coolant right there in the hose I'll put that hose on there and then I'll finish filling it all the way up so the radiators fill to the top of the cap. Now when I put the belt on I pick a pulley that's easy to slide the belt back onto it. So we'll get the ratchet over here in the tensioner. Go the right way. Turn it. And then we'll get it so it slides up nice and easy. Now, I've tightened up these bolts by hand real quick to make sure that the pulley's set on the water pump. And now that I got the belt on there, I'll tighten the bolts up and I'll have to hold the pulley just a little bit as I tighten it. All right, there we go. Now we're ready for the fan clutch. Press over and get it to tighten up. Pretty frustrating. Took me a few minutes to get this tool all set up. The auto parts store does have a nicer one than this. Fits in there better. It's in their loaner tools for their fan clutch tools. This is a little harder to get in there. There's little holding tabs on the shroud. So you want to make sure you line them up. Now we're just going to tighten up those seven bolts. Okay, we tightened the seven bolts and now we're going to get the air filter and put the air filter housing. Now you got to make sure there's these little rubber grommets and this one's busted. And you got to put them in the correct way. And you got two on each end. So you slide this down in there. Then you line up the holes with it and you just push it down in. Now when you put this grommet onto the throttle body housing here, you want to make sure that you get it all the way around and you don't pinch it because you'll get an air leak. And if you get an air leak from here into there, it will make the engine run bad. And then you're going to want to tilt the air filter housing up a little bit on the bottom to get the little tabs to go in on the back side. And these should go down pretty easy. And then we hook up the mass airflow sensor and the idle air control wire. And then we have to tighten up the eight millimeter clamp back down in there. So the radiator is full and we know that there's coolant behind the thermostat. So there'll still be a little air pocket in here. So when we start it up and we let it warm all the way up, we'll have to shut it off and let it cool down and let the cooling system cool all the way down and then recheck this fluid again, this fluid level again, make sure it's okay. And then you wanna make sure you top off your overflow bottle to the full line. So we started the vehicle up, 
let it ran and made sure the thermostat opened up. We checked for leaks once it got hot and got pressure. We double checked for leaks. There's no leaks for coming from the water pump or the hoses that we messed with. And um, so that pretty much wraps up this water pump on a Vortec motor. Thanks for watching White Collar Garage.